almost all French armoured cruisers from the very first, Depuis de l'Homme, had followed a similar armament pattern. A main battery of 194mm or 7.6 inch guns, usually two, but on occasion four, and a secondary battery of either 138.6mm or 5.5 inch guns, more common in earlier ships, or 164mm or 6.5 inch guns, the former based off the calibre of Age of Sail 18 pounders, and the latter the same calibre as the later Age of Sail 30 pounders in French service. However, Whilst all French armoured cruisers built in the 20th century had moved to twin turrets for their main battery, the secondaries had consistently been mixed with some guns in turrets and other guns in casements. The final French armoured cruisers would change this. Whilst other nations' last armoured cruisers either retained a roughly 6-inch secondary battery, or went with a semi-dreadnought-style armament with a larger calibre of secondary guns, only two armoured cruiser designs decided that the way forward was a uniform main battery. The Germans, with SMS Blücher, when they thought the British were going to build the all 9.2 inch version of the Invincible class, which they led everyone to believe, and the French with the Edgar Kine class, which was two years ahead of the Kaiserliche Marine and preceded the Invincibles as well. The main battery thus consisted of no less than 14 of the 194mm or 7.6 inch 50 calibre gun, arranged in a pair of twin turrets, one fore and one aft, six single turrets, three per broadside, and four single casements, two per broadside, beneath the fore and aft superstructures. This gave a unified nine-gun broadside, with the only other gun armament consisting of 20 single 65mm anti-torpedo boat guns, all in casements, a pair right forward and a pair right aft, and the rest in two clusters of four per side, in between the wing-mounted primary turrets. A pair of submerged torpedo tubes, one on either side, completed the overall armament. Armour ran the full length of the ship's hull in two strakes, with a complex step down in thickness, Amidships, the belt was 6 inches thick on the lower strake and 4.7 inch thick on the upper, with four step downs in thickness to ultimately around 3 inches at the ends, with the thickest section covering the length delineated by the wing mounted and casement guns. Complexity didn't end there, with two decks of laminated armour of about 1.5 and 2 inch total thickness respectively, and 6.8 inches of armour on the face of the twin turrets, 5.8 inches on the face of the single turrets, and 6.5 inches on the face of the casements. Although on the turrets, these were further laminated with backing plates that brought up the total thickness, but with reduced effectiveness compared to apparent thickness. There was also an armoured conning tower if you wanted to go die in a giant bell. Displacing a fraction under 14,000 tonnes, speed was 23 knots, courtesy of just over 36,000 shaft horsepower, the French using their own CV measurement, which powered three vertical triple expansion engines driving three shafts, with coal as the fuel source. As the design used no less than 40 boilers for this purpose, the ships maintained the trend of most French armoured cruisers of two widely spaced groups of funnels, with two groups of three in this case. Two ships were built, Edgar Kine and Voldec Rousseau, laid down at the end of 1905 and the summer of 1906 respectively, launched in just under two years each, but thanks to various tweaks and changes, they were not accepted into the fleet until the start of 1911 and 1912 respectively, by which point the entire armoured cruiser concept had largely been outmoded by several generations of battle cruiser. This wasn't helped by Waldeck Rousseau hitting an uncharted rock on trials and needing to replace her portside propeller and propeller shaft as a result. However, once finally in active service, both ships saw a degree of action in World War I. Edgar Kine hunted Goben in the opening stages of the war, whilst both ships would be active in the Adriatic against the Austro-Hungarian Navy, attacking and being attacked by various units of the Kaiserliche und Königsliche Kriegsmarine, although neither ship managed to sink anything but, in exchange, both ships remained afloat themselves. Unlike many other armoured cruisers, both would see continued service after the war, taking part in operations against the Bolsheviks in the Russian Revolution, and helping rescue people from the Great Fire of Smyrna in the then-current round of Greco-Turkish hostilities. Edgar Kine would be converted into a training ship in the 1920s, before running aground and sinking at the start of 1930 near Algeria. Waldeck Rousseau remained on frontline duty until 1932, 
although she was held in reserve for much of the 1920s, then became a reserve ship again between 1932 and 1936, at which point she became a stores hulk and was towed a little bit out to sea during the German invasion of France to prevent easy capture. Once the port of Brest was occupied, the Germans ordered that no crew would be sent back out to her, and so she slowly took on water and sank in shallow water in August 1941, being gradually broken up for scrap over the course of the rest of the war. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.